What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video here in Chicago. Happy New Year's you guys. I needed a break after the 12 days of Wolfmas, so I took some time off. That last video you saw was actually from December, but now we are playing in January. This is up to date and all the videos from here on out are gonna be up to date. I really appreciate all the support and a shout out to the seven winners of $520. That's huge. One guy even sent me a picture of him redoing his floor, so that was pretty cool. We are into this one-two game for $300, but I promise bigger games are to come. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And now, without further ado, let's get into the hands. Let's go. We're in for $300, but before I can get my camera set up, I get into an all-in situation with the Ace High Club Draw. 2023, we're getting it all in on draws, and uh, I end up banking it on the river, so there we go, a nice little bang to start the session. The opponent ends up turning over Ace-Queen for the rivered straight. We had him in bad shape the whole way. That's no good, sir. Full double up for us already. I'm up $300. All right, first hand of the night, I look down at Queen-10 offsuit from the hijack. Under the gun opens it up to $10. The player on my right puts in the call. I decide to call as well. I think also going for a three bet is a pretty fine option to do. But when I just put in the call, we're going three ways to a flop, which gives me the open ended straight draw comes ace jack nine rainbow. The under the gun bets out for $20. I'm going absolutely nowhere with my open ended straight draw. I put in the call and let's see if we can get two bangs in a row on the turn. In position to the turn card, and we turn the nuts. Bang! The king of diamonds giving me Broadway. Absolute dream card for us. We have the ace high straight, aka Broadway for all you noobs out there. But now the under the gun decides to check it over to me. I'll have absolutely none of that. I'm going to go for around a half pot size bet here of $40. I think I could even size up. There's some draws out there, some two pair combos, and of course that backdoor diamond draw. So I decide to bet out for $40. And the opponent puts in the call. The river card is an interesting one. It comes the ace of hearts. It pairs the board. So now hands like ace jack, ace king now have me beat. Additionally, pocket jacks have me beat as well. But when he checks it over to me, there's still a lot of hands I can get value from. I could also get value from hands like ace 10, ace 8, ace 5 that are just never folding. So I decide to jam all in for around $150. That's effective. I have him covered. And now he goes into the super tank. He's deciding on what to do here. He clearly has a tough decision. I'm putting him on an ace at this point. If he had a boat, he'd obviously already snap call me. So now I'm praying for a call. And the poker gods answer our prayers. He does put in the call. It's the same guy from the ace king versus ace queen hand we just played. I turn over what should be the best hand. And sure enough, he mucks his cards. $453 coming my way. Two for two on the session. 2023 is off to a great start. All right, no complaints from me. I look down at the bullets now from the big blind. The $5 straddles on a few limps to me, so I'm gonna pop it up here to $20. And three players say, yep, I'm coming along to a flop. They put in the call with $80 out there. We are off to a flop, which comes 10-9-3 with two clubs. Having the ace of clubs in my hand is important to note. But when the action's on me in the big blind, I decide to fire out for a little bit of red chips. $40 is the price of poker. The hijack now min clicks it back over to me. Well, almost a min click. He makes it $90. When the action folds back around to me, I look over at his stack. He only has around 50-ish dollars more. So I decide let's play for all of it. If he has two pair or a set, so be it. I have pocket aces. He doesn't have much more. So I decide to put it all in. And uh, he puts in the call. No surprise there. I turn over my aces and he turns over 8-9 offsuit, so a dream spot for us. The turn card gives him a little bit of hope, it comes the jack of spades. Come on dealer, we're in a good spot, let's just run clean here on the river. And it comes a clean one, the jack of clubs giving me two pair, aces and jacks with a 10 kicker. That's going to take it down there, no sweat for us. $365 coming my way, one chip for every day of the year, and you better believe it's going to be a good one. All right, how could this session get any better? We've had uh, three hands where we've won, and now we look down at pocket kings. So we go from aces to kings. What a dream session already. I'm in the uh, small blind here with King Kong, and the $5 straddles on, and the hijack opens it up to $20. Music to my ears. Hopefully, he's never getting those chips back. The button now puts in the call. Another player hopefully never giving those chips back. 
and I decide to raise them up to $80, which I think is fine. I honestly could go even a little bit larger. Usually it's 3x the initial raise, plus another uh, x for every caller, and then I'm out of position, so I probably could go 100 here, but that's neither here nor there. $80 is the price of poker, and both of them don't want to play for more. They both find a fold. They know I'm running too well, and I was going to scoop this pot. But still, got to put that in there. I'm 4 for 4 on the session. Next hand, we look down at the beautiful 10-9 of spades from the button. And I decide to straddle this time on the button. You could do that here at the Charity Games of Chicago. So I decide to do it. A lot of power in straddling on the button. I know you guys out in Texas have the uh, Texas button straddle, which is absolutely insane. I won't get into that. But it's not as gnarly here. So when the action comes around to me, I decide to raise it up to $20. Two players put in the call, that means we are going three ways to a flop, which comes 5-5 five, five, deuce all red. The action checks over to me, and it's going to be pretty hard for someone to have a piece of this board unless they have a hand like ace-five suited. They could of course have some pocket pairs, but let's put some pressure on those, and I decide to bet out for $15. The early position puts in the call, he's the only one to do so, so now we are heads up to the turn, which comes the eight of diamonds, and the early position checks it over to me once again. If I'm going to represent any strong hands here like 10s plus, I need to go for another bet. That's what I decided to do. I bet out for 40 bucks and I'm hoping now early position decides to fold a hand like 6s or 7s. Maybe even a flush draw might fold. But instead, he does put in the call. Not great news for us. And we see a 7 of clubs on the river. So now it makes pocket 7s a little bit less likely. Although, of course, if he did have my favorite hand, he now has a boat. When the action's on him, I'm expecting him to check it over to me, and then I'm going to be in a tough spot. Do I go for a bet? Do I go for a check? Who knows? But he takes all those concerns away from me when he just decides to donk lead into me for $120. Maybe it's possible he has ace-5 and doesn't want me to check it back. Maybe it's possible he has pocket 8s or pocket 7s. Either way, though, he made my decision very easy. I muck my cards, and we finally lose a pot on the night. When the table breaks, we move over to a new one, and this is a great time to tell you guys about my new Discord channel that I just made. The link is down in the bio. I'm gonna be chatting with you guys, letting you guys know about certain cities that I'm playing in, meetup games, going over my vlogs. So yeah, it's free to join down in the description. And also don't forget, my $68 Masterclass Poker course is down below. The best value you can get for 68 bucks. And yeah, go check that out in the description. And uh, let's get back into the hand here. Ace Queen offsuit from early position, let's go to battle. I decide to raise it up to $15 and we get two callers. So we're off to a flop, which comes optimal for us. Ace Queen 8, <laughs> we flop top two. There are two clubs on board. There's some gutters to straight, some interesting things developing here. So into this $48 pot, I decide to bet out for $25. There were two players in the hand and the player on my left decides to put in the call. The other guy gets out of the way so we are off to the turn which comes the five of hearts. I look over at his stack, he only has around 115 left in there so I decide to jam it all in. It's an over bet but if he has any club draws he's going to have to commit here. If he has a hand like ace king, ace jack, he might just pay me off as well. If he has eights or fives so be it, he deserves my chips. But I rip it all in for 115 and he thinks about it for like 15 to 20 seconds. I'm praying for a call, but when he does, we are off to the river, which comes a 10 of spades. I turn over my hand and he turns over his. They get mixed up, but look at it. Two aces and two queens. So uh, yeah, he had the exact same hand. Not sure why he was tanking on that turn, but uh, hey dealer, can I just take the two aces there and say that I won the pot? It always feels like a loss when you chop a hand you thought you had a lock on. Either way, we look down from the small blind at king 10 of hearts. The button puts in the straddle, so uh, I'm going to raise this up to 20 bucks. In the big blind and under the gun both put in the call. Hold up a second. Let's give some shame to the button for not defending it. Like, how are you going to put out five bucks there and not defend it in position? He goes by the name of Oliver, but uh, we'll get to him later. The flop comes 9-8-6 with one heart, so I have a gutter to the 7, I also have two over cards and the backdoor heart draw. I start with a check and the big blind does as well. Under the Gun now decides to bet out for $45, and it would be ambitious for me to put in the call here, but we're playing some fun poker this year. I decide to put in the call looking to pick up a turn card that is favorable to King 10 of Hearts on this uh, very dynamic board. I put in the call and the big blind does as well, so we are still three ways to the turn. Turn card now comes the Ace of Diamonds, which uh, should be better for my range than the callers, I guess, right? Because I made it 20 pre, they both called me, but at the same time, when uh, there's a bet and a call on this flop, I'm not just going to lead out into them when a good card comes for me. 
So I decided to check it over to the big blind. He checks it over to under the gun, who waves a white flag and takes a free card. Interesting, hmm. And now the queen of hearts peels off on the river. Would have loved to seen the ace of hearts on the turn. This would have given me the nuts on the river. But uh, either way though, uh, we still have some options. I don't have to snap check it over to them. And I actually decide to go into my bag of tricks and after the turn gets checked through, I'm putting them on some weird hands like 9-7, 8-7, maybe a hand like pocket 7s, pocket 5s, maybe a hand like king 9, 9-10. Nine, so yeah, a lot of hands that can't really face a lot of pressure considering there's two overcards now. And I decide to bet out into the $200 pot for $115. I think this is gonna get through a large portion of the time when under the gun checks it back on the turn. So I like my bluff here until the big blind puts in the call and it gets even worse when under the gun now raises to $300. I'm gonna get out of the way, uh, definitely folding my cards here with king high. The big blind puts in the call, under the gun is gonna show his hand. He turns over jack 10, so he rivered the straight and the big blind shows queen nine for a river two pair. So yeah, definitely did not put them on those hands. Same time though, didn't really feel like I lost too much. And we're gonna move right along to the next hand. Big slick, ace king of spades from under the gun. I raise it up to $15. Player on my left puts in the call. That means we are heads up out of position to a flop, which comes queen 10, eight with one spade. Into the $33 pot goes another 15 bucks from myself. And the player in the plus one position puts in the call, bringing us off to a turn. Will it give me Broadway? Yes, it comes a jack of clubs. Bang, we turn Broadway. Third bang of the night, and I'm gonna take it, and now I'm gonna play it a little bit tricky, and I check it over to him. My logic is, if he has a hand like king, queen, queen, 10, pocket tens, uh, maybe a hand like 10, nine, He's just gonna bet it himself. I'm not really missing out on too much value. If he has a weak hand, it's doubtful I'm gonna get value on the turn and the river. So when I check it over to him, I'm hoping that he bets so I can go for the check raise. Unfortunately though, sometimes you run the risk of him checking behind. That's what happens here in the $63 pot. We see the five of hearts on the river. Now when he checks back the turn, it's probably the best move to bet out into him on the river, probably somewhere around 50 to $75. But instead, I get tricky tricky once again and check it over to him. I don't know why I did. Kind of just in the moment thought that I could trap him for uh, another street here. That's what I decided to do and now he takes up the bait for 30 bucks. That's half the size of the pot, which uh, I don't know if it's a bluff, if it's a thin value, but let's punish him and let's make mine look like a bluff. I go for the check raise to $150, looking to put pressure on any of his queens, two pair type hands, or maybe some of his busted flush draws with a pair that still want to pay us off, like ace 10 of clubs, ace queen of clubs, ace five of clubs, who knows? So $150 is the price of poker, and uh, he snap mucks, so it seems like it was a bluff, but $243 coming my way, no complaints for me. All right, three hands to go, why not pick up the bullets from the cutoff? I look down at them and raise it up to $15, and the small blind puts in the call, leading us off to a flop. Flop's decent for us, it comes queen 10 four with two clubs, and the small blind decides, hey, let's lead out into the preflop raiser. To which I say, hey, thanks for doing that. Should I raise you or should I just put in the call on this dynamic board? There's king jack, jack nine, any club draws like ace five, ace king of clubs. Uh, I decide just to put in the call. Let's see a non-connecting card on the turn. And we kind of get it, it comes the 10 of diamonds. So any of his 10X holdings now get there, but those weren't gonna fold anyways on the flop if I made it 60 over his $20 raise. So I wouldn't be too mad if he had a 10. Of course, I'd lose the pot, but uh, I'm rambling. We're off to the turn action and he starts with a check. Now you think if he had a 10, he wouldn't slow down here and check. This is probably a weak queen checking to pot control, considering I could have some 10X in my range when I just call him on the flop. For that reason, I'm gonna go for value into the $72 pot, goes $50 from me. I think it's important to get value here. There's still the club draw out there. He could have a queen and not fold. When I bet $50, he puts in the call and we are off to the river, which comes the six of diamonds. He checks it over to me now for a second time. And I'm debating between betting and checking. It feels a little bit weak to check behind a hand as strong as pocket aces. So let's get a little bit of thin value here versus a hand like king queen, queen jack, queen nine. I don't want him to have a 10, but I think he would have check raised me on the turn or just let out on the turn, so I'm not really putting him on that. I bet out for $115. Yeah, he's gonna call me with any of his queens, any of his pocket nines, pocket jacks. So I bet out for 115, and when he puts in the call, I confidently turn over the aces, which have to be good, right? No, 10 deuce offsuit. 
10 deuce offsuit. So he had the 10 in his hand and then played it awesomely on the turn, checking it and then not check raising it, exposing the strength of his hand. He definitely got the maximum there and he uh, needled me a little bit indirectly by saying, oh, you didn't raise it preflop. Rewind this video, buddy. I definitely did raise it preflop. A nice hand, sir, if you're watching this. No complaints from me. Pocket Jiggities, we need to rebuild this stack. 550 in it and I look down at it from the big blind. Oliver's in the small blind and he raises it up to $10. I decided just to put in the call and uh, play this one tricky against a previous guy who made the vlog and we are off to the flop which comes ace ace five with two clubs. Seems pretty harmless unless he has an ace in his hand obviously and he decides to start off with a check. The raising it pre and checking the flop he could have a hand like nines, eights, sevens, maybe a club draw and I decide to check behind and see a clean turn card which comes the four of hearts. He now bets out into me for $15 and I'm going absolutely nowhere with pocket jacks. When I put in the call, we are off to the river, which now gives me three pairs, uh, a little bit of overkill on this board. And he bets out one more time for $50, the size of the pot. Seems like a bluff. Maybe clubs that busted uh, would bet out here for 50 bucks. It is polarizing though, so his strong hands would be any ace, obviously. But I'm not going anywhere with pocket jacks. I've underplayed it the entire way. I put in the call and he turns over ace queen. Nice answer. <laughs> last hand of the night, and we didn't forget about Oliver beating us in that last hand. We're going to try to get him in this one. I look down at three deuce of hearts from the button. The cutoff is Oliver, and he raises it up to $10. The only way to get my money back is to raise it again. So I make it 30 bucks with the beautiful three deuce suited. My three high is going to get him. Whatever he has, it's getting cracked. He puts in the call, of course. We're going to battle here for the beautiful vlog watchers of my channel. And the flop comes ace, nine, eight with one heart. Great flop for my range. Not exactly the best flop for my hand, although I do have some backdoor draws. For instance, if it runs out two hearts, if it runs out four or five specifically, I would have essentially the nuts. He checks it over to me and I recognize it's a good flop for my range. So I decided to bet out a third the size of the pot for 20 bucks. To which Oliver says, uh, I don't believe you. He puts in the call and we see a beautiful card on the turn, the seven of hearts and now gives my hand a little bit of extra equity. My three high has never looked so good. When he checks it over to me for a second time, I gotta put any of his pocket pairs or weak aces in a tough spot. So I decide to bet out into the $103 pot for 80 bucks. He mucks his cards face down. I muck my cards face up, baby. Three do suited, getting that one through. Let's see his reaction in real time. Top of my range, Oliver. Oh my Get out of here. Oh, the chair is flustered. Get him out of here. From Northern Europe. How cool is this, you guys? This is Dusan. You guys don't know him, but he actually won one of the 12 days of Wolfmas. He's $520 richer. And uh, thanks to Charity Games. Charity Games always are good to us. Shout out to Dusan coming out here, thanks, meeting up at thanks the vlog. So nice to meet you, man. Thanks. What do you guys say to the people? Uh, shout out Wolfgang, and uh, you'll be seeing more of me. Let's I'm go. Gonna He's going to make a vlog. Yeah. He's going to make a vlog. I'm going to make a vlog, and I'm going to be in there. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are you in the hand? After meeting Dusan, we rack up our chips and head over to the cage, exchanging them for some cold, hard cash. 20, one, two, three, four. All right, you guys, that wraps up that one, two session here from the charity games in Chicago. Got in for 300, out for 624. Obviously, you saw my aces get cracked by 10 deuce offsuit from the blinds, but what are you gonna do about it? The action is great, I'm gonna keep coming back. $324 a profit, and I don't have to give it to you guys, so that's pretty cool. I actually made some money this time. I'm joking, really fulfilling, and shout out to Dusan for uh, coming out, one of the uh, seven winners there of the 12 Days of Wolfmas. Really cool to meet him in person, and uh, he's going to use it to help start his bankroll and uh, play more games at Morongo, so that's pretty cool. If you guys made it this far and you want to get better at poker, I do have my training course. It's only like $69. The link is down below. With tons of hours of content from my poker coach Alvin and myself. If you guys made it this far and you're not subscribed, drop a subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Good luck on the felt, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.